Okay, so here we are among this group of illustrious young people, and the first question I had to ask myself, am I the oldest person in the room? Anyone older than 52 here? I already know that Lucas comes close. Are you older than 52? You son of a bitch, you took the victory away from me. I wanted to be the oldest person in the room, and I wanted to be the oldest person in the room to tell you a story that is important. The first thing is, after listening to all the people here tonight, starting with Stephanie and Gerard, and then going to Angeline, and then listening to Mandy, and then listening to Irina, and then Bastion, and then Tiffany, and then Alex, and then starting the new sequence with Chris and Lucas, and then coming down to the question of Amy, and then the questions that Ford went forth with Boss and Elper, and then finally Peter, and then me. Do you know where your food comes from? Can you make or grow your own? The question is incredibly important to life, but all the people that preceded me in talking tonight were talking about things like community. They were talking about where our food comes from in a very subtle and strange way because we're all looking for sophistication. We're all looking for the things that are important. Don't look at my slides anymore because they're not important to what I want to speak about because I didn't prepare this in a way that's relevant to the talk. I wanted to touch all of you in a way that's important. Because I don't create talks inside of me, I listen to it and I think about the people. So here I am in Berlin, and I'm listening to a bunch of people who are interested in sophistication, in building community, in building and admiring diversity, in building something wonderful out of the world. And the first question that comes to me is, how relevant is your tactile experience of life? I'm 52 years old, we got one bugger who's older than me, and when I was a young guy, we used to go in the fields and we used to chase bugs. Now, I admire the fact that you're creating these amazing things with computers and digitalization, but we have to have a nexus. Remember, this is all about systems and it's about things that we have developed in our own creative mind, but what is the interrelationship with nature? You are of nature. In the Catholic Church, there's the Ash Wednesday, and you go back to ashes. If any of you can prove that you don't go back to ashes when you're dead, you'll be proven to not listen to me. But because you are of nature, the nexus has to come from us and redevelop what we are as a community, as a society, as a world. Something that's so extraordinarily important that if we don't get a hold of it now, we're going to lose out on everything. And the basis of this is curiosity. I tell people over and over again, the basis of changing the world is curiosity. When Angeline talked about cognition in her talk, when we listen to Chris talk about the idea of games, we can live in a natural game, a real world, go out and look in the fields. I'm an ethnobotanist. I travel all over the world and I look at plants. It's not so relevant to what I want to teach you tonight because my experience is to open up a huge, amazing world and it's real. You don't have to create thousands and thousands of years of history where humans have interrelated with nature. You have to be able to experience it. You're missing out. You're playing games. Wonderful. You're creating this phantasmal world. But you are made of flesh and blood. And I can prove it because if I come and punch any one of you, you're going to scream or you punch me back. You're tactically deprived. There's an expression in the United States that came about a book of young people called Nature Deficit Disorder. The synonym or the acronym for the disorder because young people don't go in nature anymore. They're afraid of it. What about the bugs? I mean, I know my girlfriend, she doesn't do anything. She wears high heels. She's afraid of every insect in the world. And yet I run around the world looking for these things. The vast diversity, the complex relationships between humans and people that have gone on for hundreds of thousands of years. 25,000 years ago, people were living in almost every part of the planet and they were surviving and now we hear companies like Monsanto telling us things that we aren't going to be able to feed a hungry world with nine billion people because we have to genetically modify organisms to be able to feed them and why this is relevant is number one you don't know the difference not to say that you're not intelligent intellectual curious but the story is so detached from your reality that you can listen that the only way we're going to feed a hungry world is through making corn more resilient to drought, to make rice more productive or more higher in vitamin content. And the reality is we have forgot about the diversity of nature. I spent 30 years traveling around the planet, eating food all over. This is in the Kalahari Desert in Namibia, the Nara melon growing in vast desert sands. And yet it has fed the people who have eaten it for thousands of years. The story is reconnect with nature, build communities, find the nexus between the brilliance of your minds. That digital world that you've created that's so magical is replicated a billion times in nature. Even something so mundane and boring as soil happens to be an extraordinary community, a game better than any digital fabrication. Not to dismiss 
credit, your genius, but apply it in a way that reconnects with nature. This is why the story of the world is not being told. I wanted to tell about the real story of food, but I realized after listening to the people here, that it was more relevant to give you this message. Did it come? Do you get it? Diversity, curiosity, connecting, building a new nexus of systems. We can do something extraordinary because all of those together make for an incredible new world. Thank you.